the October jobs report is out, and you know how this will work. <laughs> Unexpectedly, uh, we did not create the jobs that we thought would be created. On the other hand, if you're watching ABC, NBC, or CBS tonight, you'll see, what is it, Scott Pelley, Lester Holt, and David Muir will all come on and say, the unemployment rate has dropped in America to 4.9%. Vote Hillary. Vote for our girl. Except, of course, well, there are no jobs. So why is the unemployment rate low? Well, because you see when you run out of your benefits and 26 weeks, right, if you haven't found another job, you don't get counted. You've got to be a huge army of Americans living under bridges somewhere just trying to, you know, survive and forage for fo- uh, food in the forest at night. It's the only way I can think they're getting by. And yet media will be spinning this for their girl tonight just ad nauseum. And, you know, that, that'll be their talking points. The problem is, if you're those people who are living under a bridge, I don't know, maybe you don't vote any longer. I don't know if you can register and, and call that your domicile. Yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm over there under the Hanson Bridge in a, in, a, in a lean-to. Well, sorry, sir, you can't vote. But I would think that a lot of people out there who realize, because they'll be hearing this song and dance routine, oh, the economy's better, it's turning around, isn't it great? Super, super, super. We have 1.5% growth in this country, and what is it, GDP? Now, that's recession level. It's been that way for a long time. There is a writer who is making the argument today that Donald Stephen Moore, who writes normally for the Washington Times, has a piece at something called Real Clear Policy, where he says Donald Trump's economic reforms could bring us back to 4% growth and quickly in this country which was what we had during Ronald Reagan's tenure in the White House on average, which was the last really big spurt in this country's economy that was continuous for a long period of time. Now, all those people out there who are going to buy this baloney that the economy is getting better, when you're driving by all of those homeless people, how many times have you come out of Winco and seen the guy on the corner? And it's not one guy. They seem to alternate. There are several of them with their signs. Sometimes they're veterans. These people are out of work, and they've been reduced to begging on street corners. This is, this is not the sign of a healthy economy, and this is in a state that has one of the lowest unemployment rates in the country. And that is, of course, because we're run by which political party? Oh, right, I get it. But this notion that people are going to be out there and they're going to believe it when they hear that unemployment has dropped so the economy is better. All those people who no longer are counted as unemployed, they're looking around at each other and saying, what the heck are they talking about? Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. You could reach our program today by dialing 736-0300. That's 736-0300. You can also email me at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. That's Bill. Dot Collie at townsquaremedia.com. Uh, it just it just boggles my mind that media plays along with this. Well, as we heard Chris Cuomo say in the first part of the program, uh, media has now has taken over the role of uh, politically correct police, and uh, they are now out to protect people. Uh, they're no longer actually just giving facts. Uh, they're going to be supplanting. Uh, well, they don't like law enforcement anyway. I mean, they won't even criticize Hillary Clinton for campaigning with a guy who sings about killing police officers, which she did yesterday. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, sir. I'm a uh, retired Army veteran, and my daughter enlisted in the Army. And a few months ago, she just finished basic training at AIT, and we were taking her to Salt Lake to fly out to go to South Korea. And we happened upon Homeless Row that's uh, it's right off the interstate, uh, right there in a prominent part of Salt Lake. She was stunned. And uh, so were we. I've seen it before. But it seems like there are hundreds, if not close to a 1,000 people, just homeless people, all right in one segregated area, which you know, I'm sure the city wants them all in one place. But it was just astonishing. We'd never seen that many in that location before. That tells you right there exactly what what the state our economy is in, the state that our our, our nation is in as far as socially. Uh, It's just astonishing to me that people don't see it, realize it. I think they do. I think they just don't care. They they want their agenda more than they want the the betterment of humankind than anything else. We're about to I'm going to guess we're about the same age. When Ronald Reagan was president, 
the, the network newscast screamed every night about the homeless crisis in this country. And then as soon as Bill Clinton came along and then, of course, Barack Obama, we don't get these stories any longer, do we? No, absolutely not. It's because it doesn't fit their agenda. Their agenda is their agenda is control and power over over the rest of us. That is exactly what this is all about. This isn't about rights or freedom or anything else. It's about control. Um, I served in the military for 21 years. I had the pleasure of serving under under Ronald Reagan. Um, I also had the displeasure of serving under Bill Clinton as the uh, as the president. Uh, it, they despise the military. That was evident. I was stationed uh, a little as an army soldier I was at Little Rock Air Force Base for a time. We had to provide the details to go in uh, the honor guard to as they came in. It, there was a, an instance where they took us into a room to meet the first lady, and that was the first time I ever heard a person of that stature cuss. Uh, it was just amazing to me that. When she watched, she says, why the blank am I here with these people? And left. And that told me right there was exactly what she thought about the military. Well, i got to let uh, you go on that count. And I thank you for that story. I want to talk about that uh, coming up in a few minutes because they claim Trump has a potty mouth. Give me a break. A caller is not the first person to share with me that Hillary Clinton was abusive uh, verbally to folks who were in the military as well as uh, Secret Service agents. One of my old football coaches, I was talking with him a few years ago, and he was telling me that a player that he coached years after I had been a long time for me, let me put it that way, about 40 years since I played for him. But he was telling me that one of his players had gone to work in the Secret Service and said, uh, came back home to visit one time and told him, he said, yeah, this is not a person. And we've heard many of these stories. People have reported these in books and Mainstream media won't cover it, though, claiming, oh, they're just got, they've got an axe to grind. Well, I've actually heard it from people who were there. So I, I, I know it's, it's happened, and media just would like to try to tell you that she's the sweetest thing, and that mean Mr. Comey and that mean Mr. Trump and those evil Russians are out to get her. Yeah. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Coming up on 845 right now, 31. Thank you for listening, but if you're having difficulty hearing, we'd like to remind you, you need to go see Dr. Christine Pickup, a doctor of audiology at Mount Harrison Audiology in Rupert. She'd like to open your world to new sounds and experiences. A new hearing device is available which works with the brain to help those with hearing loss hear more naturally than any previous aid on the market. She's offering a two-week free trial with these new devices. You can call today and schedule your personal fitting appointment Open your world to better hearing. Call Mount Harrison Audiology, 312-0957. Call today. That's 312-0957. Got a lot to talk about this morning, obviously, and we're going to be talking about firearms. And Forrest Anderson just sent me a note and said, we do have to talk about the possibility that there's going to be an upcoming war on your firearms in the Second Amendment. Uh, we don't know which way the election is going to go, and if it happens, what do you need to know? What do you need to do? These are all going to be important things. We shared the story yesterday, a college professor from, I believe, Ohio, who was trying to recruit people to go with him and shoot up the NRA headquarters in Virginia. That's funny. <laughs> the guys who actually won the NRA are likely armed to the teeth and know what they're doing, and you'd have some college professor who's a little bit on the effeminate side showing up, and but he's no longer on the job. Uh, but we're dealing with people with that mindset increasingly. And they're, they're very, very dangerous. And, and they, one writer today I read said, Mr. Obama has absolutely no respect for the Constitution. And Hillary Clinton is worse. 846 now, a telephone number for reaching our, our program. It's called News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Top story with Bill Colley. Telephone number is 736-0300. That's 736-0300. Uh, Mr. Clinton, who I guess would be the next first lady, <clears throat> well, he was in Nevada yesterday looking for a few ladies. And uh, he said, you need to vote for his wife so we can please other countries. Everybody outside this country thinks we're crazy that we would even consider voting for somebody who tells us we're going downhill and everything's terrible. We are rising and the future is bright because of you. Her answers are better than the anger he stands up. Her pledge to empower you 
is better than his efforts to stir resentment. Ooh. Now he knows what people in foreign countries are thinking because he and his wife have been taking a lot of money from them, which they're then going to uh, have to return or do some favors for all of those people in foreign countries, don't you know? 736-0300, and we have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on Top Story. Yes, uh, I was wondering, uh, you know, Hillary has lied under oath to Congress. What enforcement mechanism do they have other than the Justice Department and impeachment? Uh, since she's not, if she's not uh, in office, uh, what, what can they do? Uh, can they bring civil co- uh, case against her, or can individuals like me bring a civil case against her? Because my understanding is somebody could have, somebody should have appointed a special prosecutor throughout all of this to take a closer look at it. I would imagine. Now, Comey can recommend an indictment, but the current makeup of the Justice Department, that won't happen. So it will be left in the hands of Congress. I would think that members of the House could be tackling uh, this issue by, let's say, they could be going after her, at least on some of these, uh, call it, find some way to call her out in contempt. But I I do thank you. That'll be a question we'll have to have uh, answered perhaps by one of our legal talkers in the next couple of weeks. Uh, Jason Chaffetz from Utah, great guy, former kicker at BYU. He might have made that kick a couple of weeks ago, by the way, up in Boise uh, that got blocked at the end of the game. He was speaking last night on Fox News on the Kelly file, and I think he's giving some ideas of where this could go. We put the Department of Justice on notice that they are to preserve all these documents that they may find in these other investigations. Now, a lot of this we've read about just in the media, but we put this in place as another step to make sure that no other records are destroyed, uh, displaced, or uh, done anything other than preserve them because Congress, uh, essentially the American people, are going to want to look at them at mm-hmm. some point. We're going to expose this. We're, we're going to shine light on it. That's what we do in the United States of America. We're different than the rest of the world. We are self-critical, and I have a constitutional duty to be the tip of the spear, to be that, that uh, check and balance on the executive branch. I'm not here to be a cheerleader for the president. And shame on those Democrats and the others who say, oh, we should just back off if she's elected. No. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens in this election, we're going to work to hold her accountable. I'm going to get to my caller in just a moment. Uh, Nancy Pelosi yesterday said it would be unconstitutional to impeach President Clinton if she becomes President Clinton. Yeah, I said earlier in the program, Democrats have been smoking some really strong dope. You're up next. You're on the air with Bill Colley at KLIX. Go ahead. Bill uh, Chaffetz also said that, you know, I had to look look past the potty mouth of Trump and say to his 15-year-old daughter that he's going to vote for Trump. And uh, we, we need all of those out there, Christian listeners. You know, if you're going to let that be the deciding factor factor in your vote, then God help our country because the choice between Trump and Hillary is dramatic. I mean, just look at the Supreme Court nominees alone will be devastating to this country forever. But I'm glad he said that they would just be going forward and. And and really, they may just have a have a presidency from Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. And uh, I think that's. <laughs> I, I wanted to make a comment too about the about our news media. Of course, there's been nothing in our paper, national media, like you said yesterday, no coverage at all about the all of the FBI investigation and so forth. But Mark Twain, I think, said it well. He said, "If you read, don't read the paper. You're." You're uninformed. If you do read the paper, you're misinformed. That was a quote from Mark Twain. I think that pretty well sums it up. But, folks, we we have a big decision to make. So get on the on the e- emails and get hold of your f- friends around the country. And uh, we've got to vote Trump because Hillary will kill this country and finish off the socialist destruction of America. I think that's a well said point, and I thank you much for the telephone call. It shows you that there was. Obvious media bias all the way back in Mark Twain's day. I saw something i got to mention quickly that I think is related to what we're dealing with this morning when I mentioned that these people are simply going to try and get their tentacles into every aspect of your life if we don't stop them. And we have an opportunity. This might be the last opportunity we have to stop them come this election day. 
and at least by means that you know are considered civilized. Came across this from uh, the Review and Outlook. That's what they call editorials at the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the writer points out, and with a little apology, that because of all of the other news last week, that the story about uh, the Bundy brothers and some of their associates being acquitted, uh, found I guess was not guilty. There's a, you know, those words can have slightly different meanings. This happened, of course, last Friday, and it was big news late in the day when it came down from the, the federal courthouse in Portland. But the, the writer is not happy about the decision from the jury. However, he says the jury felt the government was terribly heavy-handed. And the writer goes on to say this. If there is an interest in not letting these disputes, uh, disputes reach the level of an armed seizure of a federal facility, and there is, then someone in Washington, D.C. had better recognize that the government's administration of Western land could use less arrogance and more prudence. There's a recognition that people here have, have an argument, and a strong argument. Now, your politicians and your, your leftists wanted the government to go in there and shoot all these guys where they were still on the, re, uh, still on the refuge. Uh, they wouldn't want that to happen, though, with all of the, uh, the Indians up there who are throwing bombs and Molotov cocktails at police in North Dakota who are trying to protect construction of a, a potential pipeline. Uh, on land, by the way, that has no relation whatever to their own ancestral lands. It wouldn't be anywhere near it, but it's the big cause celeb for the, uh, for the Hollywood types. But the writer is pointing out that the jury, maybe more so than the Bundys and their associates, has sent a strong message to Washington, and that is, we don't like your arrogance, we don't like your heavy-handed regulation, and from here on out, we want a greater say in how this is going to work. Bill Colley with you on Top Story this morning, about five minutes before 9 o'clock. Uh, call at 32, we're right at the freezing mark today. And you're listening to News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill, uh, up in northern Washington, in the center of the state, up on the Canadian border, there's Okanagan County. And in, back a couple of years ago in, in the uh, summer, they had a million acres burn. And one of the problems they had was the rancher says, don't set the backfire. Don't do it. It's going to cause problems. So the Forest Service set the backfire, and it burnt 650,000. It was just unbelievable. But see, these ranchers lost cattle, mommy cows and calves that were burnt to death, uh, fences, corrals, log cabins, uh, outbuildings, machinery. And because the uh, ranchers can't prove that that was the what burnt there, you know, because how do you know how a fire will burn and how it goes? There's no way to prove it. But they have just arrogantly told these that, well, and plus they lost all of their grazing. And some of these guys were really looking at bankruptcy in the face, and the, and the government says basically, you know what? Well, this is the same, this is same the arrogance kind of arrogant we see at the Gold King Mine, yeah. right? The Gold King Mine disaster was that same type of arrogance some dingling from Washington came in and thought he knew better, and now they're trying to cover it up as best as they can. See, this is the thing, you know, if you listen to Donald Trump speak, and I do, I believe him, and he makes sense, and let's face it, it's a hell of a lot better than this depraved whore for forgiving. Sorry, I'll hang up. Thanks. You're thinking about her husband, aren't you? Uh <laughs> Thanks for the call. Um, just quickly, i got to mention this before the end of the hour. Uh, Forrest Anderson will be along in a few minutes. We'll be talking firearms. And yes, uh, come Tuesday night, we may have a much greater need to, uh, well, it'll be good for his business. It'll be good for mine, too. I mean, obviously, she'll be the gift that keeps on giving as long as they allow us to stay on the air. But Market Watch has a story today. For those of you who are desperate to find work, Taco Bell is going to be adding 100,000 jobs across the country between now and the next seven years. So if you're looking for work, you can go to work and say to people, uh, may I help you? You won't be able to afford to buy a home or a car or anything like that on the salary they'll pay you or the hourly they'll pay you. But at least there are jobs. Um, uh, essentially working perhaps for whatever minimum wage the government will try to set. 
which then will mean, of course, Taco Bell will reverse its decision and decide to bring in robots. This is the future of America, and the Democrat Party is the sponsor. I've got more coming up. Bill Cowley with you today on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Hey, if you haven't yet turned the heat on, uh, just a quick reminder some of you may be about ready to do it. My floor is cold, and uh, unfortunately, I don't heat the floor, but. Those of you who have issues with your heating unit, you need to get in touch with Ramsey Heating and Electric. They're out in Burley. They'll come out and they'll get the repairs done or just make it more efficient. They'll make sure it's done right and done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. You can telephone them at 678-0459. That's Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. As I say, one more hour ahead on this program today, one more hour of self-righteous, God-fearing pomposity.